Hey, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy to be connecting with you today. It is a Thursday, and for me, it's the fourth day of my weekly live stream. And today, I'll be focusing on maintaining calm and trust in the heart of all of this chaos of the life that is currently surrounding us. So if that subject matter sounds like it works for you, I encourage you to stick around. As a, uh, as a individual that's been doing these live streams for a year, uh, for anybody that's new just tuning in, the reason I go by the name Master Paul is because I am a certified master teacher, certified by the Tao Institute, and have been studying under my spiritual teacher and father, Dr. and Master Zhigong Sha, for over 10 years now. So basically the, the little label master in front of my name simply means that in the subject matter that I am skilled in, I'm very knowledgeable. And with that, I can assist the average Joe to get through this, uh, this life of spirituality that more and more of us are waking, are waking up to. Yesterday, uh, if you missed it, the subject was on um, how do we... Uh, be okay. How do we get along with all those that are not thrilled with our awakening uh, because they think that we're weird or we're the black sheep or we, we don't get it. They think they are ahead of the game when in fact we're the ones that are awake. So if you missed that and it sounds like something that resonates with you, I encourage you to go back to yesterday's live stream and to, uh, to take that information in. And how you can do that is by going above this video at the end of this one, of course, because you want to stay and watch this. But uh, you can click on the archives. Another way to accomplish that is simply by um, uh, friending me and subscribing. And then you'll have access to my page. And when, uh, because you subscribed every time I go live, if Facebook feels like it, they will notify you. Facebook's a little funny that way. I, I appreciate their live streams. I mean, you can't complain about a a free service, but uh, they decide who they want to tell. So Robert wants to know, am I a telepath? <laughs> I, am a, I do what's called a soul reading, uh, Robert. Um, I would not call myself a telepath or a psychic, but for my comprehension of the, the world of soul, um, the ability to be telepathic is equivalent to the ability to have open spiritual channels free and clear of uh, a variety of karmic spiritual degree and free and clear of ego. So if, uh, if that is what defines a telepath, then I would say my channels are more clear than less clear and that I have been practicing that for a while. So I tend to get some pretty clear pieces of information, especially about soul and people's soul journeys. So I hope that answers that question. So welcome to everybody that's joining. Uh, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for hitting the share button, letting other people know about this. And then uh, last week, if you missed that, I got some pretty good feedback on that. It was on the nature of the Solite era. Uh, it is on the nature of why we are here. Uh, almost all of my subject matter it revolves around soul, the, the purpose of life, why we are here how we clear our spiritual blockages, how we can move through this life with less pain and greater uh, enjoyment. So uh, if that kind of subject matter uh, resonates with you, I encourage you to learn more. I encourage you to follow the links listed above the live stream. And again, for those new, I encourage you to uh, enjoy today. I know some of you do have to, to run. You're just kind of checking this out. But if that's you and you're interested, you'd like to know more, my uh, suggestion would be to subscribe and then uh, like me and you can always come back to my page. So thank you Shirley Schuster for joining today. Aloha Lisa Carter. Aloha Michelle Grand. Welcome to Janice Crosby. Aloha Kristen Rojas. Aloha Johannes. Welcome also to Teresa Darling. Haven't seen you here in a while, Teresa. Great to have you. Welcome, Richie. Welcome, Sharon. Aloha, Scott. And aloha also, CJ. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Elizabeth and Paul. Aloha, Theresa. And welcome, Dawn. Welcome also to Amanda. And aloha, Elizabeth. Thank you for all your referrals. 
Uh, thank you for all of you for your referrals. I know I see some referrals Elizabeth sense pop up on my page. Welcome all to Sue Chantal. Welcome Dawn. Aloha to Dan Martino. Welcome Tina Yates. And aloha Nicole Nadeau. Shahari. Welcome. Aloha to Robert. Hopefully that uh, answer assisted you. And welcome also to um, Jessica. Welcome Suki. And welcome to Jessica's mom and daughter Chloe. Welcome Magdalena. I hope you're able to stick around. Aloha just to uh, Kristen Strachan. And welcome Andrea. Welcome also to Arlene Watson, Jagdeep, aloha. And welcome Matthew O'Hara. Welcome Miguel Sandoval. And welcome Missy Dodd. Okay, a lot of folks jumping in today. Maybe it's a very good subject matter. How to maintain calmness and trust in the midst of this chaotic life. Probably will resonate with some people, like yesterday's topic. Uh, typically, I'm going to readjust myself here, get in the lotus position. Typically, what I've discovered is that for those of us that are awake or waking up, um, it comes with a lot of um, what one might refer to as a spiritual purification that's a nice word for it one might also call it um, hell <laughs> it really depends on how it feels to you individually um, I'll share some insights on that today and hopefully offer some uh, very specific guidance and practices that help you process through it uh, <laughs> by the end of this afternoon as with all of the wisdom and teachings I share I give credit to my spiritual teacher and father master Shah and uh, I encourage you to learn more about him uh, through his website. Of course, you can go to my website because I share a lot as well. So welcome also to Lisa Zarniak and welcome also to Stan Davian. So for those that are new, uh, I start my live streams with a soul song. It is a mantra. Mantras carry healing power, gathering power. And this mantra is called Love, Peace and Harmony. So I will chant it to serve you. It is a, as I indicated, a healing mantra, so you can make a request. And um, as I do this, if it, if it resonates with you, if it's something you like, I encourage you to download it. The song is currently available in uh, 43 languages, and there's a, a hope by, by our teacher that it will be spread around the world to bring love, peace, and harmony. So it's also quite well known for uh, helping us to have a, a calm life so if you like calm I would suggest downloading it so let us place our hands in soul light soul service hand position dropping the left hand in front of the heart center the right hand very gently remain pointed towards heaven we close our eyes and let us fully connect out I will invite in the beings of light so dear our beloved divine creator all layers of the divine the Tao, the source the soul of our angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascendant masters, lamas, gurus, sifus and saints. All of our heavens teams, guides, angels and saints, Buddhas, bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary. We love you all, honor you all, deeply appreciate you all. And we thank you for your unconditional service to humanity, to our individual souls and our soul journeys. We ask for your presence at this time to please to come sit in our individual heart centers. We ask that as I share today that you borrow my mouth and assist each and every soul here with the wisdom that will reach into their heart, awaken them even more, and offer them the guidance that they need to move through these chaotic times with both trust and calmness. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, Transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please turn on. As I chant your mantra, we ask that you please gather all souls together in love, peace, and harmony. And gather today, all of us, in oneness. So again, for those new just tuning in, this is a mantra. This is a blessing. Please close your eyes to receive. Everybody else, please join. Lula, Lula, Lee. 
Lu la, lu la la li. Lu la, lu la li, lu la, lu la li, lu la, lu la li, lu la. I Hopefully that blessing brought some value to you. So welcome also to, let's see, to Bob Raul, uh, Bob Reed, excuse me. Welcome Mariana, welcome Nicole Talish, welcome Sonia, aloha Dana Knapp, and welcome also Susan Birchmore. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for sharing, letting other people know about this live stream today. Because of you, we've reached uh, live watching about uh, between 56 and 60. That's actually uh, a very high record. What that tells me is not that I'm liked. What it tells me is that the subject matter, people are interested in the subject matter. The subject today is how to live in these chaotic times with trust and calm. When I originally uh, received the message of what to share and talk about today, the uh, message was just trust. Okay, that was the message. Just talk about trust. But when I went to uh, search for a cute um, picture, because pictures always grab people's attention, um, I came across that cute dog picture. And along with it was other comments on calm. So I checked guidance again and it said, yeah, go ahead and add trust and calm. Because a lot of people are actually exceedingly... Uh, in a, in, a, in a chaotic place of stress, anxiety, um, a lot of us on the awakened path are not where we know our ideal place is. So we're gonna start this conversation right there. <clears throat> I encourage you, first of all, to type in, in, in the Facebook search engine, my name, Paul Fletcher, and then the words Soul Light Era, Soul Light Era, like S-O-U-L. Um, after this live stream, of course. It will pull up a live stream I did about a week ago, and it will fill in a lot of blanks as to some of the things I'm gonna to cover today. But in a very short period of time, I'm going to bring you up to speed so then I can talk about the chaos and then why we are so knocked around inside of it, even though we're awakened beings, and then how to deal with that, okay? So that's what you can expect today. So also welcome to Sarah, welcome to uh, Spacia. And um, any other souls I have not mentioned, welcome. The Soul Light Era has been known by many other names. This is what my teacher refers to it as. And it is a, um, a loop in time, if you will, where we have come back into soul uh, over matter versus mind over matter. It's an era of time in which we are moving into 4th, 5th, ninth, 20th dimension. Everyone's got a perspective on that. I'm not going to put out um, something that irritates people in terms of my understanding versus their understanding. But we're absolutely all moving into a higher dimension and a higher layer of frequencies. This is not news to any of you. However, if you look backwards a little bit in time, you'll recognize that many beings of light, including you, have been coming into humanity. 
We, in essence, are, um, we're the Marines at the front of the line, I guess is a good way to put it. All of those that are watching today wouldn't be here if we weren't awakened on some level. We wouldn't be getting the poop kicked out of us by life if we weren't the Marines on the front line battling the light, okay? Battling to stay in the light, battling the dark. Uh, but that also means we're getting our tails kicked. We are in a place of exceedingly high chaos. Uh, this is both an exceptional time and a very hard time. How can I say both at the same time? Because when there is great darkness, when there is exceptional light, there is great chaos. That's why it feels so very unpleasant for a, a big chunk of this life. Your soul came in to be in this place in time on purpose. Think about that. Your soul purposely was, it was ecstatic. It was jumping up and down like a little happy kid before coming in. And you're thinking, what in the hell was my soul thinking? But your soul truly was that ecstatic prior to coming in. Why? Because at the soul level, all souls understand the purpose of life, which is to reconnect their heart and soul to the highest aspect of their creation as quickly as possible. And in, in all honesty, uh, it's much faster path when you're down here on earth getting our tails kicked. When you're up in heaven just sitting in lotus position meditating, yes, you will grow. Yes, you will move closer to the light. But honestly, it's not as fast as when you're down here. When you are one of those souls sitting on a mountaintop here in Tibet, they're beautiful souls. They have very pure thoughts and words. You take that soul, bring him into a city, they're probably going to be out of whack for a long time. You and I, the light workers that are on the front line, we came in into chaos of this world in the cities, in the environments we're in, and we've had to battle this front line. We are the ones that move aside the darkness and make path for the light. That's why it's been so difficult. But heaven makes note of everything. They know exactly what you're going through. They give you everything that they can, everything that you're capable of handling, so that you can power through it and you get massive amounts of virtue, good karma, good credit, for moving through all kinds of blockages. So there's two forms of light that you are bringing in. One is your own light to clear your own karmic blockages. The other as you're being a light worker to assist all of humanity, okay? Because we are all one. So everything you do for yourself absolutely impacts the rest of us, okay? Every, right now, my service to you is giving you this information. If it awakens you more, if it helps you, all humanity is helped. This is part of the nature of service. Anything you do, even if it's for yourself, if it's for clearing the spiritual karma and debts that you came in with, remember your soul is jumping up and down, yay, yay, yay. But at the soul level, each of your souls knew that in the midst of this exceedingly high frequency that we are in essence being forced through, it has a natural side effect of rattling free our personal karmic blockages. The natural side effect of moving into higher layers of love and frequency is the darkness, the spiritual debts, the negative karma that we all carry on our souls. Uh, because trust me, you, you might think you're a saint, but if you were, you wouldn't be here. We are here to get clearer, brighter, more like our beloved Jesus, more like our Buddha. So until we're there, we're here. And so our role is to awaken ourselves as quickly as possible and at the same time assist others there. This, in essence, is why we have such a difficult time in this chaotic uh, experience. We'll talk more about how to maintain trust and calm in this, but you must first understand uh, that you, your soul anyway, chose to be here. Just really grip your mind around that. It purposely, actively, consciously chose to be here. Everything that I've taught, everything that my spiritual father, Master Shah, has taught from the beginning of his uh, 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 
teaching to the public, which was about 20 years ago, has always, always, always been around you are a soul having a physical experience. You are, uh, the soul is the boss, not the mind, not the body. So we're moving out of mind over matter into your soul being the boss. And your soul knows what it's doing. All you have to do in this life is align to it. That's your only requirement. And everything that he has taught, everything that I teach, is specifically to align to your soul. Because as you align to your soul, what in essence you are doing is you are clearing all of the things that you call pain, all of the financial suffering, all of the health suffering, all the relationship stuff, all of the, is this guy telepathic? Can he really heal? Uh, who is Master Shaw? All of this mind clutter about what is life? What is it about? Why am I here? Why is it so hard? Nobody understands me. My parents don't understand me. Why am I alone? All of this mind clutter, all of the heart blockages, all of that, honestly, is exceedingly irrelevant. But that's where we're stuck at. That's where the chaos is. It's irrelevant in relationship to us being a soul and us being here on purpose to serve. But we get stuck in the chaos because we haven't realized the other truth and activated and acted upon the other truth. So we're stuck over here in the chaos, which is why I started with teaching you, you are a soul, you're here on purpose, your soul wants to be here, your soul asked to be here, but in this exceedingly high frequency time, as we're moving from darkness to light, you and me and all humanity is being forced to become loving. We're being forced to release hatred, anger, ego, which is I'm right, you're not. Why did they do that to me? Which is not taking responsibility. We're being forced to take responsibility. We're being forced, in essence, to be a soul. We're being forced to move into our true essence. It feels like pain and chaos because of the lack of recognition of these truths. So what do we do? We go to live streams like this. We go to people that do card readings. We go to people that do numerical readings. We go to the psychic down the street. We call our best friend and we cry on their shoulder because we don't really want to grow. We just want somebody to listen to us cry. We do, um, what else do we do? We go to spend money to have somebody to help us through the problem. We go get a massage to de-stress. We do almost anything we can to awaken but there is a shortcut, guys. I tell you, there's a shortcut. You can do the, the, all of these things. I'm not saying don't do them. I have done a lot of them. But the reason I'm here spending my very valuable time freely to serve you is because I know I can't go higher unless you go higher. That's just the nature of how life works. So I am here to assist you so you don't waste more time than you need to waste. The shortcut is the soul. The shortcut is awakening. The shortcut starts with the, the, the recognition. You wanted to be here at this time. Just step into that right away. You wanted to be here because you knew it was the greatest opportunity <clears throat> literally in over 45,000 lifetimes to have the opportunity to level up and move away from the previous four, five, six hundred lifetimes of experiences. Most of us humans, at least this is the information I've heard, have done this about four, five, six hundred times. It kind of sucks if you think about it. You know, we're, we're still not enlightened. We haven't, you know, we're not experiencing the, the joys of, of the Buddhas and the Jesuses. Do you really want to do more of this, right? Most of us, we chose to come in as a soul so we don't do more of this. Your part is awakening. How then can I move from this chaotic place to a place of trust, which is a big issue, I'm going to talk about that next, and calmness. Because you cannot have calmness until you have trust. And you cannot have trust until you bring yourself into a place of awakening. 
and a, the kind of awakening that does not dance around all over the place. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's see what this person has to say. Let's listen to that psychic. <clears throat> These are um, individual slices of guidance that kind of move you from one moment to the next. You don't really need uh, a sprint, guys. You need the kind of information that helps you run the long haul marathon of this life calmly and with trust. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. And every time you go uh, a, a little direction here, a little direction there, yes, you might get a little fix like that, that drink of snops, you know, last week or something to help you feel a little better temporarily. You know, smoking that, that grass helps you feel, te you know, temporarily a little better. But it's basically a cover-up agent. It doesn't really allow you to be present. Uh, I have talked upon many times being in the present, not easy. Trust me, I know it's not easy. We know we're not in the present when we're in fear, which is typically future, or worry, uh, anxiety, depression, which can be future or past. Okay, if we're in an emotional state, uh, probably not in the present. And so, uh, gratitude we talked about in the past is what it takes to be in the present. How do we move to this place of trust? Let's talk about that. How we move there is doing a reverse of how we got in a place of being out of trust. Now, I'm guessing that half of you are in a place of trust, and I'm guessing the other half, mm, you're probably somewhere in between. You know, I'm not so sure about this whole life thing. You know, I believe there's maybe a God, but I'm not sure. Everyone's got an opinion. There's you know, all these different religions. I don't really like religions. Um, you know, everyone's got a version of their levels of trust. If you were truly in a 100% place of trust, uh, then you would be very much like our beloved Jesus. You would be already very much like our beloved Buddha. You would be an enlightened being. Because an enlightened being is already 100% in trust. So all of us have our varying lacks of that, whether we want to admit it or not. Sometimes, those of us, um, we have trust early on in life, and then life is very chaotic as the subject matter today, and we get whacked over the head by um, someone that we care about that gets taken away from us. And <clears throat> then it feels like the pillars of our house have all been removed. The house comes crumbling down and we lose faith in everything. We have no clue how to even move forward. This has happened to probably half of us as well. Now we tend to pick up the shambles and keep moving forward, but it definitely leaves a trust imbalance on our soul. So why does it do that? Part of it, a big part of it, is because of our existing knowledge, which is not soul-based knowledge, by the way. It's more mind-based knowledge. How can I say that clearly? Because your soul, if you were aligned to it, it is always aligned to Creator. So if you were aligned to your soul, then your soul and Creator being already aligned, you would very clearly feel the one billion percent unconditional love that surrounds you and all of us one billion percent of the time. Hard to believe for some of you, but we are literally a billion percent of the time bathed in unconditional love. Doesn't feel that way when when our trust is challenged. Doesn't feel that way when we're paralyzed. Doesn't feel that way when we have our fourth car accident. Doesn't feel that way when someone very close to us gets taken away. It challenges our trust. So, why is our trust challenged? Because of what we have come to accept as true was not. What we have come to accept as true was what we were taught. We were taught by our parents, our peers, our religious uh, um, belief systems. We were taught by those. When we came in as a pure soul, as a, as, a, as a beautiful soul, happy dancing upstairs, yay, I'm coming in during this incredible time of darkness and light. I can clear my karmic stuff. I can help humanity. I can move to enlightenment, possibly in one lifetime. Yay, 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 yay. That's what your soul is doing, the happy dance before it came in. Comes in, and then you get the parents you got karma with. You get the peers you have karma with. You get the religious societies you may have karma with. And you get it coming at you and you lose your original soul knowingness. You lose 
the purity, the one billion percent purity that you knew as the soul before you came in. Opening your spiritual channels, doing the forgiveness practices I have been teaching as long as I have worked with my teacher, Master Shah, who has been teaching it as long as he has been born, doing these bring us to a place where we can return to the purity and innocence of that original soul we are before coming in. Our teachings are flawed. Your parents did the best they could, but their teachings were flawed because it came from their parents, which came from their parents and so forth. The religious teachings are flawed. I have come across very few that speak only of unconditional love, a God that has no jealousy whatsoever, and a God that loves unconditionally one billion percent of the time. Very hard to find a teaching like that in today's society. Most of us grew up with a variety of flawed teachings that bring us to a place where we build up a trust based on those flawed teachings, then life, the chaos of this life, especially at this time, just beats us down, inhibits us from awakening to our full soul potential, and inhibits us from aligning to the, um, the true 100% love that we were, still are, and that is constantly surrounding us. Okay, so when we move into this process right now today, your part in that is remembering what you came in as, a pure, unconditional soul that knew that trust with God, that knew that purity of why you came in, and then a recognition of the falseness that has been delivered to your world based on your karma, guys, because there's not a single person watching this that has the same karma, not a single person watching this that has the same parents, the same peers, or the same religious teachings that came to us that specifically molds us to have the personality that we have. Those individual uh, players in this game are our servants. They are the ones we owe the greatest gratitude to. The ones that gave us the false teachings, the one that gave us the hardest experiences are the ones we owe the greatest gratitude to. The ones we blame for the chaos are the ones we owe the greatest gratitude to because they are the ones that give us the greatest opportunity to move from darkness to light. When we see them as a opportunity to clear our karmic debts, because that's why they're there, guys, if they bring us suffering, that means we brought them suffering. Okay, not hard to understand. We do our forgiveness practices. We release them with love and forgiveness. We move aside the chaos of our life. We return to the purity of our soul and its journey. We clear our spiritual channels and we start receiving the unconditional love that's always been there. We move from the lack of trust back to the trust because we move from all of our mind-based experiences and comprehensions to the ones that are heart-based experiences and comprehensions. We have to move from the mind to the heart. This is the only way out of the chaos. There is truly no other way, okay? I could have said that in the beginning. We have to move from the mind to the heart. Probably would have lost 20 of you right there. You know, oh, this is just one of those guys that just has, you know, oh, da, da, da. But I didn't do that. I walked you through a series of understandings of the nature of why we're here, how we're here, how life beats us up, but why we are responsible for life beating us up. If you don't think you're responsible, maybe you shouldn't be watching this. We all cannot blame God for the shit that's in our life. Pardon my French. But that is the lack of responsibility. We cannot blame God for somebody, some other soul that is an important part of our life for them leaving. We must understand that any soul that is in our life, if they have left and we have a broken heart, that's not our karma. They didn't leave because of our karma. They left because of their karma. They left because of their uh, specific soul-based contentions, intentions, their soul-based truths. You don't know what their soul was fulfilling with their departure. That departure could be, by the way, a divorce. It could be a loss. It could be um, any number of things. But 
you don't trust that that was part of the plan because your mind is trying to comprehend it. If your heart was connected to your soul the way it was before you came in, then you would know very clearly that that soul had its own karma and its own purposes. Everything in this fabric of life is very intentional, including us taking responsibility. So we have to uh, move from the mind to the heart. How do we move from the mind to the heart? I will walk you through it today, but I'm also going to do a calling right now. I'll do it now and I'll do it at the end. You truly need a guide. I have been on this journey since the age of 20. I'm over 50 now. You guys figure it out. That's 30 years. And I don't just mean picking up a book. I mean literally going to a four-year or three esophagal school, training with three different enlightened masters. I have literally had my nose to the grindstone. And so when I speak, I speak from these experiences. You need a teacher to move you from the pain to the light, from the chaos to the, the heart, from the mind to heart and soul opening. These little one hour live streams are awesome uh, and great to serve. I know it helps you tremendously. You tell me it does. And I apologize if I'm not serving you well. I apologize to all the souls if I have offered wrong and false information that has not served you well. I will do better. Uh, but sometimes we need very focused attention. So I call you to my program. I have a 12 week awakening your spiritual channels program. The nutshell is that it clears the blockages in all of our energy centers chakras, but why are they there? That's what you will learn. They hold all of our pain and suffering. All of our chakras and our energy centers, people don't know this. They are the repository of all of our karmic blockages. They don't just come to us out of the blue and hang out on our left ear. They literally reside in our physical body, our soul body, in our chakra system. They reside in our energy centers. Our blockages reside in our organs and our system. The karma blockages, when they are removed, the chaos of life can be um, seen very clearly and dissolved much faster. So Kristen Rojas it, will post my link at least go check it out. It's a 12-week program. It will serve you well. Okay, back to the program as we currently have. So how to move from the mind to the heart? We do that by doing heart opening practices. I know it sounds very simple, but when you do heart opening practices, where is your thought? It's not here. It's not in fear, it's not in anxiety, it's not in worry, it's not in doubt, it's not in a lack of trust. When you do the blockages to open the heart, who can come in? The billion percent of the unconditional love that has always surrounded you, that you're so distant from, at least many of us are, that we don't even know it's there. We don't even recognize that we're always surrounded by it because we're so stuck in the sauce of life. So when we take the time to open our heart center, when we do the practices associated with it, we, and it have to be consistent by the way guys, we in essence start to hear clear messages. We start to hear, how do I heal my relationship blockage? You'll receive the message. We'll start to hear, uh, dear God, I'm suffering financially. How can I resolve this? We will hear clear messages. The people that need, that, 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 um, literally will come into our life to help us resolve these problems will come. Why do they come? Because we're aligning to our source. Do you think your soul wants you to suffer? Do you think your soul is enjoying your suffering? Do you think God is enjoying your suffering? They're sending you countless angels, countless beings of light, but if you stay stuck in your stuff, how can they do that? Do you know why there's such a thing as ghosts? Because ghosts get stuck. Ghosts were not aware of their connection to source when their life was taken. They are stuck because they cannot see the light. They cannot feel the love. That's why ghosts stay stuck where they're at. That's why people who take their own lives get stuck in certain layers. They can't go to the higher layers because they are stuck in their pain. 
Do you understand? Souls are constant and forever. We have to move our mind to the soul consciousness, the love, the light consciousness. So if you choose to remain in your place of fear, anger, sadness, grief, depression, anxiety, in the face of wisdom such as this that can help to move you from where you're at to where you need to be, that is your choice. That's why free choice exists. But it may not be serving you in the bigger picture. That's why you need a teacher. Uh, it doesn't have to be me, guys. There's 140 master teachers out there all over the world. They're all happy to serve you. Master Shaw's happy to serve you. I'm just here, and I'm offering to serve you as well. But you need a teacher to move you from where you're stuck at to where you can return to the light. That's how we move from the chaos to the light. So we're going to do a spiritual practice. It's for opening your heart center. We're going to do a forgiveness practice along with that, specific to um, releasing that which is inhibiting us from uh, uh, moving from our mind to our heart, okay? So, wherever you're at, sit up straight with your back away from the back of the chair. <clears throat> Bring your thoughts, your mind, your breath, into your lower abdomen, the back half of your lower abdomen, below your belly button, down to your tailbone, and the entire back half of your body. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath there. Deep breath in. Really bring the light into this area. Place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, left hand over the heart, right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Let us fully connect. Dear all the beings of light who have come, you can repeat after me. Dear divine, my beloved creator, all the beings of light who have come to this live stream today, my name is, state your name, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. I am humbled and honored to receive your blessings today. I ask most humbly and most sincerely for forgiveness, for not awakening more to my soul, not awakening more to my promise of why I came in, to clear my blockages, to serve, I apologize to my soul for not awakening sooner and aligning to you more and sooner. I ask for your blessings today to open my heart and soul to move from my mind to my heart. I ask that you put in front of me every hour and every day anything that reminds me of your love, your um, service, your light. If it's the lick of a dog on the side of my face, the smell of a flower, the sunlight on my cheek, if it is a song that hits the edge of my ear, I promise to pay more attention to all the ways you are sending me your unconditional love and move from the suffering that my mind has brought me to the open love of my heart. I thank you, my beloved divine creator. I thank you, all the beings of light and my soul, for your service. Let us ask forgiveness for all those souls that we may have harmed. Continue to repeat, if it is comfortable for you, Dear all souls in all lifetimes, if I or my ancestors have offered unpleasant thoughts, words, or actions that has caused you physical suffering, emotional pain and suffering, loss, grief, a lack of trust with the divine, if I have ever taken the lives of your loved ones, and you suffered greatly. 
I sincerely apologize. If I or my ancestors have ever harmed you in any way that you have returned the wisdom in this life that I can learn from, I sincerely apologize. I apologize to all souls if I have offered wrong spiritual teachings that has kept me from opening my heart and aligning to my soul. If I have ever been a spiritual aspirant on the path, but then did not learn, taught others wrong information, or steered others away from the path of light in any lifetime, I most humbly and sincerely apologize. I ask your forgiveness. Dear the soul of my heart center, my message center, I love you. You have the power to open yourself. You have the power to release blockages in my heart, to release negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. You have the power to release my spiritual debts and to realign me to my soul and to heaven. I ask most humbly and most sincerely for you to do a good job. Thank you. Dear the soul of Da I, the greatest love. Da I is Mandarin Chinese, it means greatest love. The Da I specially blessed calligraphy that Master Paul will use. I love you. Could you please bless me to awaken my soul? Release blockages. Open my heart and bless my soul journey. Please bless me to release my blockages of trust. To regain my trust in my beloved Creator. Please bless me to forgive myself for this lack of alignment. Please bless me to remain calm and in a place of trust in these chaotic times. I am very grateful. Thank you. One more thing. Dear Divine, please bless me with financial blessings enough in the next two weeks where I can easily afford the 12 week class with Master Paul. Thank you. Now we will chant what I want you to visualize in your heart center. Invite in God. Invite in your favorite uh, beings of light. You can invite them all in, but if you prefer Jesus, invite in Jesus. You prefer Buddha, invite in Buddha. Ask them to sit in your heart center with you and sit across from one or all of the beings of light. See them radiating their light into your heart center. Let us begin. Chant along with me if it is comfortable. Blessings begin. Dai, 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 dai. Da I Da I Da I Da I Greatest Love Oneness Calligraphy Opens my heart and soul, releases my blockages. Greatest love, oneness calligraphy, opens my heart and soul. Releases my blockages. See the light clearing blockages in your heart center. 
Thy die opens my heart and soul. Thy die blesses my heart center. Please heal me. Remind me of my soul promise. Release chaotic thinking. Bring trust and calmness. Die, die. Die, 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 greatest love, greatest love, oh, Opens my heart and soul, releases blockages. Die, die, opens my heart and soul, releases lifetimes of pain. Brings in unconditional love. Isher Dai Wu Tiao Jian I Opens my heart and soul release lifetimes of blockages. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. Continue to visualize, beloved beings of light, divine, your beloved creator, opens his heart, bigger than big, as wide as all universes. See your soul walking into the divine's heart. See your soul being permeated by the purest, most eloquent, unconditional love. The Divine talks to your heart and tells you, I love you. I have always loved you. I have never stopped loving you with all my heart. Please forgive me, my child, if I have brought any suffering to you. I love you unconditionally. Please forgive me, my beloved child, if you have experienced suffering. I give you my greatest love. I give you my greatest light. I clear your blockages in your heart. Receive my love, my beloved child. Receive my love, I love you. The Divine will sing you a song, Receive the Divine's Love. I love you, I love you, I love you.
I love you. Receive the divine's love. I love you. 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 Your heart is purified. Your heart is wide open. It can now receive your soul's love. It can receive the divine's love. It can receive love unconditionally from all sources. Inside your heart, bow your head to your beloved divine and step back out of the divine's heart into your own heart center know that you are always in the divine's heart for you were born from the divine's heart you have never left the divine's heart forever you are in of and from the heart of your beloved Creator. Therefore, you are always surrounded by unconditional love. Bow your head in your heart to all of the beings of light who have come to sit in your heart center. Ask them all to remain as long as they would like to. Tell them you are very, very grateful for their incredible unconditional service to your soul. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I bow my head nine times to Divine Dawn Source, to Master Shah, my teacher, for the opportunity to deliver this wisdom to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So when you are ready, please feel free to share. Pay attention to any sensations or vibrations. If you had any third eye images occur, please share your third eye images. Today was a very, very powerful teaching. You have the opportunity in this life to accomplish what you came in to accomplish which is enlightenment. Enlightenment for the soul level is to move your soul to sit in your heart center. It begins by clearing the blockages. It begins by moving away from this. I'm being told by Facebook that this live stream will literally end in 55 seconds. I do not know why. It must be a new thing from Facebook. I'm going to not sign off. I'm going to let Facebook sign me off because maybe they're limiting the amount of time on the live streams. I want to see if that happens. So I apologize in advance if I'm not able to see your uh, comments. I will come back afterwards and comment on them. But I hope that Facebook does not sign us off. If it does, it means they're changing from unlimited live streams to one hour complimentary they're probably going to start charging for longer ones that's my guess well let's find out what happens 
unlimited magnificent waterfall began feeling hot it says it's gonna sign off in three seconds let's see what happens love you all love you love you love you <coughs> okay so far they haven't signed me off 